So it's great to have Huey McIntyre uh, joining us uh, in this film. Uh, Francis and I met Huey some 25 years ago to the north of Glasgow um, under the strangest of circumstances. And Fran, you're going to start just asking Huey some questions, I think. Yeah. Um, yep, yeah, Huey, um, one of the things I wanted to ask you was um, how important was it to you to have your own home when you moved out of hospital? Um, very important in my life was to have my own, just to get out of the castle and have my own freedom and do things that I haven't done and starting to um, fit in with other people. And now that living in my house, it's just feel like I've got my own freedom that I've always felt like this is my own place, that I always like my own space and so I could then um, not to be picked on all the time and that and it's 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 been great. My life has absolutely changed. It's turned my life around. See when you left hospital, um you had quite a lot of support when you very, very first came out of hospital, do you remember? Um and can you tell us a wee bit about how that's changed up until now? I remember the first time when I moved into the house that I used to have sleepover with a staff called Les Dixon and Joanne. And when they were staying over, sleeping over, and I decided to stop the sleepover and let them go back home to spend more time with their family and that. And that. But they wouldn't, they wouldn't want to do that, but they wanted to make sure that I'd be okay with a sleepover. And I, said, and I said, no, just go home, spend Christmas with your family and that. And since that happened, and then it started to change. And that, and that was more like, put myself and trust myself to do what I can do. I know I used to have very bad tempers and angers and blaming other people for, for all that and I never used to take my own responsibility for my way I reacted. But this, this, some staff used to work with me but didn't want to work with me because they were scared. But I remember what this said. This says that she's going to work with me and she's going to get me She's going to be with me until she gets me on the track and she always lets me calm myself down and all that. But things are changing now since I came out of that castle. Yeah, that's a long time ago, isn't it? And yeah. you yeah. get very, very little support. You know, from all that support you had then in the very beginning and then really quickly you were saying, I don't want all this support. Well, but, even, but even from then, Huey... Yeah. Your support you get now is really different again, isn't it? You don't get a lot of support at all now. Play about 25 hours. And I only get Grant in on a Monday. Um, Grant in on a Monday and a Thursday. I don't have anybody on a Tuesday or a Friday or a weekend. But because Grant's leaving at the end of October, he's um, actually coming in on a Saturday now until... Right. That, but that's... That's, um, I don't know how it works now, because um, one of the days I might not want any staff coming in, I want to have time left up my own money again, because it's all changed because of the, this lockdown and that, it was, it was putting a lot of pressure on me. And thanks for Grant for getting up with Zoom meeting and that, to keep in touch with my friends, because if I didn't have that, I wouldn't really know what to do. It's amazing that you've been in that one house all those years since you left Lennox Castle, isn't it? Yeah, I'm all, all by myself. I get people coming to my door and ask me, if you want anything, don't hesitate. I'll come by and see if you want anything. And and, and always, um, I get the police coming to my door to check on me. I get the, the, the social workers from the council phoning up to check on me to see if I'm, I'm okay, if I'm handling the lockdown. And right. if I'm not distressed because of what's happening, I just tell them, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I just tell them, you don't need to keep wanting to check on me. <laughs> I'm, I'm 55 years old and I can look after myself. Yep. <laughs> and what about some of the highlights then of things that you've done in the last few years? Because I know some of them and I've been lucky enough to be I mean, with you. And being, we, we, we with you occasionally, like when we went to New York. 
Oh, I am from a birthday in New York. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I loved that. I wish I went back there again. <laughs> uh, but I remember the good days when I was when I was in the castle. I met Emma, you, and Simon in the hospital grounds. And when I was upset, I ran out, and Emma took me out and brought me to the office inclusion and that's when I first met Francis and Simon and then I was kind of really upset and Francis didn't like to see that in me because it was upsetting you wasn't it Francis to see me being upset oh it would upset me to see you upset yeah and that uh, so I was in the ward and then next minute um, I got to help to pack my case and pack all my stuff and then I was like what going to another hospital and he said no just Pack the stuff. And see when I went in the minibus and driving at the main gate, I was like, thank God to see the back of the place. But all that was in my head was thinking about the other people that were still... Still there. There, that I would try to get them out. I was, like, talking for them as well as myself and get them out. But when I went out, people, the staff in the ward were really nasty to me and saying, oh, you'll be back in. I said, I don't bet on it. And I, <laughs> Don't bet on it, and then, and then when I stepped, I was a bit scared because it was like I remember seeing this at the when I first came out when I went to Manchester when I did the big conference talking about this castle, Lance Castle, in front of all the students over there, and I remember when I first came out, I was like scared because I didn't know where I was going to go to, and I didn't know what the outside because I haven't been outside the gate because I didn't know what the outside world, what, world what, was, what it was going to be like what the people were going to treat me like because I don't know if they were going to treat me nice or bad or whatever and when I got out some people did treat me bad but I just turned a deaf ear and turned around and said to them I said I turned around and said to them right at their face I said Maybe I am a freak. Maybe I'm a, I've am got learning disability. Maybe I'm a spastic. But deep inside, I'm a person. I'm a flesh and blood human being. And I should be treated with respect. No people with learning disability should be treated the way you're treating me. Yeah. And let me tell you something. If you were in the place, if you were in my shoes and been in the place where I've been in, you will be glad to get out of there. But I'm glad to get out because I'm wanting to start my new life in the community and make friends, not enemies. And, and, and they, they all apologised. And the, 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 I said there because it was, I just wanted to be normal. I, I can't help having a disability. I was born with it.